As the title implies in this lesson, we're simply going to be doing more U or W substitution. Some books call it U substitution. Our book calls it W substitution. So in this lesson, our target is to really master the W substitution integration technique and also be able to apply it to some more difficult integrals. And in this lesson, we're just going to go through a series of examples modeling how to do so. So let's go to our very first problem, which is the integral of tangent x. It looks simple enough, but we don't actually know the antiderivative of tangent x. It's not one we have memorized at this point. And if we were to say, well, let's see, what happens if I let w equal tangent x, then dw would equal secant squared x dx, and clearly there is no secant squared x here. So now it's like, well, now what do we do? But you might recall that tangent x is the same as sine x over cosine x. And now we have to decide what should w be, because I could probably have w be sine x, and then dw would be cosine x, and that looks really good because um, there's a cosine x there, only we have to understand that this is sine x times 1 over cosine x, and 1 over cosine x is not the same as cosine x, and we never want dw in the denominator. So let's try again. Let's let w be cosine x. Let's see how that works out. Then dw equals negative sine x dx. And we do have a sine x dx. Let's get my highlighter here. So we have sine x and we have dx right there. Um, we just have to deal with that pesky um, uh, negative sign. So we're going to say negative dw equals sine x dx. And now, in the place of sine x and dx, I can say negative integral of dw. So I just replaced sine x dx with negative dw. I'll get my highlighter matching up here. There we go. And then, over here, w goes where I have cosine x. So we'll go back over here. And we're going to go in here, and this is going to be 1 over w. And this is a really nice, simple antiderivative, negative ln absolute value of x plus c. And then we just substitute back in. Negative ln of cosine x plus c. And there we go. We can always check our answers by taking the derivative. Let's try taking the derivative of this one. So the derivative of natural log cosine x is going to be negative 1 over cosine x times the derivative of cosine, which we put on the top, which would be negative sine x. We can see those cancel, and sine over cosine is tangent. And so our quick little check over here shows that we end up right back at tangent x. All right, let's try our next one. Here we have another one with both sine and cosine. And once again, we have to decide who's going to be w. Now, what we should note is this one is really on the inside. Let's try and write that a little more neatly so we can read it. So this one is really on the inside of the cubed. And when we have one on the inside, that is the better choice for w. So I would let w equal cosine x because this part can change to w cubed. dw, then, is negative sine x dx. And we have the same thing as before, where, oops, I want highlighter, where um, we've got sine x dx right here and here. And so we can go ahead and solve this for negative dw equals sine x dx. And we can replace sine x dx with negative dw. And when we rewrite our integral, we'll have the negative. This changes to w cubed and dw. Um, easy antiderivative, negative 1 fourth, w to the fourth plus c. And then we've got negative 1 fourth cosine to the fourth x plus c. And we've got, um, done our antiderivative there. And we're done. Again, you can um, check it by taking the derivative. 4 times negative 1 fourth would give me negative 1 cosine cubed. Derivative of the inside would be negative sine x, which would get rid of that negative and introduce a sine x. All right, let's try our next one. As we look at this one, we have two options for w, or obvious options, the top or the bottom. 
when I look at the top here, the derivative of the numerator is 2x plus 3, and this looks like nothing like 2x plus 3. When we take the derivative of the bottom, we get 3x squared plus 9x, which isn't quite the same, but it looks like it might have some potential. So let's just write it down. w equals x cubed plus 9 halves x squared, which means that dw equals 3x squared plus 9x. And we should see that, wait a second, what happens if I factor out a 3? Oops, I forgot a dx up here. So if I factor out a 3, I get x squared plus 3x. Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? So I've got the x squared plus 3x, and I've got the dx. And so I want to, over here, have 1 third dw equal to x squared plus 3x dx. And so when I rewrite this integral, my w is the denominator, 1 over w. My x squared plus 3 dx gets replaced with a 1 third dw. And now I've got my very easy antiderivative, natural log of w. And then I can just replace the original, which is x cubed plus 9 halves x squared plus c. All right, let's try another one. Um, this one is, um, we've got a square root on top and bottom. And um, there's actually more than one choice for w. But um, it makes sense to do that whole inside. Let's just try that out. We have a tendency to pick things on the inside because when we take a derivative, we take the derivative of the inside. So let's check this out. dw equals 1 over 2 root x dx. Now that's quite nice because I have a root x in the denominator here. I'm going to rewrite this integral as root x plus 3 squared times 1 over root x dx. And it looks like I have 1 over root x dx. I just have this some extra 2. So I can rewrite this over here as 2 dw equals 1 over root x dx, which means I can rewrite this integral with my 2, the integral of w squared dw. So let's just um, back up for a second and make sure we see what happened. w was equal to this right here, so we ended up with w squared, and 2 dw was equal to all of this. And so this part got replaced by 2 dw. So we're ready to do our antiderivative now. We've got 2 times 1 third w cubed plus c, and our final answer, 2 thirds, put in the original, root x plus 3 cubed plus c. All right, we have um, another one here. On this one, if you see it, it's pretty easy. If you think, oh, tangent x, 1 over cosine squared x dx. For some of you, it might help to write tangent x times secant squared x, depending on how you memorize that. And then you should say, wait a second, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And so clearly tangent is our choice for w. dw is secant squared x dx. It all just falls into place. This is just w dw. Antiderivative, 1 half w squared plus c. Plug in the original, 1 half tangent squared x plus c. We're done with that. All right, one last problem. Again, we have to choose our w. If we start at the top, we see our derivative is negative sine x, but we have no idea what to do with this x, and our dw should never go in the denominator. If I take the derivative of x plus sine x, I get 1 plus cosine x. How convenient. So we're going to let w be x plus sine x. dw is 1 plus cosine x dx. How lovely, because it's sitting right there. And so my integral becomes 1 over w dw. Antiderivative, natural log w plus c. Put the original back in. x plus sine x plus c. And there we have it. Um, these are the problems that will help you out for this assignment number 8. And um, good luck with the homework.